Hey everyone, uh, it's Jordan Starr over at Queerty and I'm here with Jacob Tobiah. Uh, just to introduce Jacob, it would take a while to, intro to sort of talk about everything they've done, uh, but they're a producer, <laughs> writer, uh, and author of Sissy, Coming of Gender Story, which is amazing. I have my copy. I have that. Oh my God, we have our matching copies, I love it. Twins. Um, and it's an activist and all around badass. So welcome Jacob, I'm so happy you could, uh, you could sort of join us. Um, I'm so glad we could virtually chat uh, for work as opposed to normally. I know. It's it's different, but I love it. <laughs> so, so first off, how are you doing? Like tell us how you've been doing. Um, I'm doing I'm doing pretty well. Um, like I feel like as of the last like two, three weeks or so, I feel like it took me a while to kind of get into the groove of of like this new reality we find ourselves in. Mm -hmm. Um it, it was definitely an adjustment period, but like now I'm feeling cute. But cool. So let's just let's jump right into it. So during this time when you're when you're quarantined at home, um, how are you making sure you're taking care of your emotional and mental health? Um, I mean, for me, it's it's been. I mean, it's been a journey, right? Like, mm -hmm. and a big part of it for me was really accepting that there were going to be the there were going to be moments where this whole thing felt like too much, mm -hmm. right? I, I I feel like now more than ever is a really wonderful time to like have a cultural conversation about toxic positivity. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if y'all have heard that term, but it's basically like the, the idea that like actually um, like telling people to like be positive, right? Like telling people to like um, cheer up, right? That there's a point at which that becomes um, gaslighting, right? There's a moment at which that becomes its own uh, type of, of emotional challenge, its own type of abuse, its own type of invalidation, right? Mm -hmm. Like. And I think in the beginning of quarantine, there were a lot of people who were like, here's my daily quarantine schedule. Like, and, and, and we're showing kind of, oh yeah, I work out 30 times a day now and I'm gonna emerge from quarantine the best shape of my whole life with like five master screenplays, um, you know, and uh, like, and a new partner that I met on Zoom, right? Like, you know, there's, there's people who were showing like, sort of showing like how regimented they were gonna make their lives and how perfect they were gonna make everything. And what it created was a lot of like toxic, positive pressure, right? This idea that we're in the middle of a pandemic and you have to thrive, right? Like now is the time to thrive. And I'm like, we're in a pandemic. Like that's not, that's not go, like if you are not emotionally dysregulated, it doesn't make sense, mm -hmm. right? Like, like this is a very reasonable time to be struggling with your mental health. It is a really reasonable time to be uh, struggling to accomplish what you usually would. It is a very, very normal time to be feeling a little bit lazy, to want a slower pace of life, right? Like there are ways in which this kind of pressure to do quarantine perfectly has just made quarantine even more difficult for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, for me, a big part of maintaining my mental health in this moment has been really um, letting go of the pressure to accomplish anything in this time, mm -hmm. right? Like. I don't have to grow my Instagram following right now. I don't have to sell any TV shows right now, right? Like I am not obligated to write another book just because we are in quarantine and there's a little bit of downtime, right? Like I am not obligated to write the most brilliant poems of my career. Like it is, for me, it's like, if I'm able to just kind of feel good every day and just kind of maintain where I am in life, like that, will be enough and is enough. Um, and the only way you do that is by acknowledging when you're not feeling great and not pretending that everything's perfect all the time. No one wants that anymore. And you were just talking about, um, you know, understanding when you're not okay or when you're sort of emotionally um, not in the same place because we're in this pandemic. Um, how have you found um, ways to sort of communicate that to others? What, what is that process of communicating sort of where you're at look like for you? took a lot of courage to reach out to friends and say, hey, I'm struggling. Mm -hmm. I actually do need to talk right now. Yeah. Um, because I thought, oh gosh, they're probably struggling too. Yeah. And like, we're both just in these like, you know, shitty life rafts and we're both sinking and like, how can we possibly help each other float? And the answer is that like, you absolutely can, right? Like you could take two sinking life rafts and rebuild like a life raft that works, mm -hmm. right? Like that like the sort of collective buoyancy of the two can support both of you in a way that your individual rafts can. I mean, I'm getting a little lost in the metaphor, but you see what I'm saying. Yes, um, So for, for me, it, took a, it co took a good deal of courage, even with people that I've known for a long time in my life, to just name, like, I'm not doing well right now. Mm -hmm. um, and to be honest about that, uh, it also took asking for what I needed, 
right? Mm -hmm. Like one of the things I realized was most missing in my life was accountability mm -hmm. um, because everything was paused and no one who I'm typical, who I'm typically used to kind of pressuring me and needing things from me, needed stuff from me. Um, and so like, you know, I feel like week four or five, I sat down with my agent, who's like sort of my day-to-day -day agent. And I was like, look, like, can you be my supervisor for the next few months? Mm -hmm. Like I need to have like bi-weekly check-ins like I would in a usual job yeah. where I have a spreadsheet of everything I'm supposed to be accomplishing and everything that I want to stay on top of, right? And, and where I get to tell you what I've done right, yeah. you know, in the last week or in the last yeah. few days and tell you what I'm accomplishing and tell you what I'm making happen. Yeah. Um, which is so silly that I'd be like, no, I need like a bi-weekly check-in with my supervisor. But like, I needed that. And yeah. having that in place has completely changed my professional life under quarantine. And it's given me a sense of accomplishment and a sense of accountability and a sense of community to like hold um, the work that I, that I don't have to be doing right now, but the work I want to be doing. Yeah. So thank you so much for sharing all of that. Um, and it leads me into a, sort of a, another question. So one of the big things that I've been hearing throughout this quarantine is that people are sort of struggling with being alone with their thoughts and sort of feelings mm. in ways that we, we aren't usually, right? So we usually have distractions, we're out with friends, but we're not sort of sitting alone at our house, like just sort of, sort of sitting with our thoughts, even if we live with other people. And so as an author, where you, where you sort of built your memoir around um, past experiences that are sometimes... Um, you know, painful, where you've done a lot of work to sort of sit with those thoughts and make them sort of constructive and find meaning in them. I wondered if you had any tips for sort of people who are struggling to do the same thing. So what I'd say is like, don't approach your mental health as something that you have to fix quickly. Mm -hmm. Approach it like learning a new instrument. You know, mm -hmm. you just kind of have to dabble gradually, mm -hmm. mess around with things that are comfortable, right? Like, like explore, talk, like don't, ex don't try and take on Tchaikovsky in round one of your piano lesson because you will get so frustrated and you will be miserable and, you're, and, and you will hate the piano forever and you will just want to give up and burn the piano down, right? Like, like start with something cute that you know that's familiar, that's a little easier, right? Don't bite off more than you can chew before you've had time to kind of build your skill. Mm -hmm. um, and so one thing I feel fortunate about is like as a memoirist, um, that is a skill set that's pretty familiar to me, right? Introspection, thinking about my life, synthesizing what's happened to me, um, connecting traumatic experiences to my current behavior and current reality, um, thinking about how the world structurally has created challenges for me and how I've overcome those. Like that kind of, that skill set is something I'm pretty in practice in. Um, mm -hmm. But even I have to practice every single day. Yeah. Um, and there are moments where I don't want to, and there are moments where it's hard, and there are moments where it's exhausting. So. I think the only way to get through this kind of demand on your on your um, emotional limberness uh, is is with a kind of radical gradualism and and a radical compassion for yourself, right? Like if you start thinking about something, if you can't escape a thought that is like because you don't have as much distraction and it just keeps coming back to you, like give yourself permission to not escape it for a while, perhaps mm -hmm. because because like being practical, be like feeling feeling or experiencing a negative emotion right like like struggling with your depression is is hard right but feeling ashamed because you are struggling with your depression is double hard right and you may not be able to fix your depression immediately in that moment you may not be able to like you know remedy it exactly at that moment but what you can do is stop feeling bad about feeling bad mm -hmm. You know, you can choose to say, it is okay that I feel bad. It is reasonable that I feel bad. It is not a flaw that I am feeling bad. And, and I am not somehow a failure for feeling such a way. I can just let it happen and let it be experienced and do what I can to comfort myself through it happening rather than try and like get it to go away as quickly as you can. Mm -hmm. And so, because, yeah. Yeah. So speaking a little in, uh, in sort of practical terms. So giving yourself that permission um, and to, to sort of be introspective and be, and be sort of kind to yourself. For you, what does that look like? Um, for me, it looks like a few different things, right? It looks like, for example, for, during quarantine, um, I realized that my daily routine, because my daily routine prior to this was like, I wake up every morning, I shower, I don't eat breakfast in my house. I go to like a coffee shop near my house to like get a cup of coffee and a pastry because it gets me out of the house, it gets me moving, it gets like the blood flowing, yeah. I you know, get some emails done, get some work done. 
whatever. Yeah. It's just like my way of being as a freelancer, but I can't do that anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. And what I noticed is that I was losing track of my mornings because I would eat food inside and then maybe watch a little TV, like while I was eating some breakfast or whatever. And then I'd shower and my routine got all jumbled and every morning it was a little bit different. And yeah. I realized like I was kind of losing track of like, it was, it was harder to remember whether or not I'd taken my antidepressant that day. Right. Mm -hmm. So like for me, some of it's really practical stuff, right? Like I had to make a, like go back to like, you know, when I first started taking them and like make a little sheet that has every date on it that I cross off when I've taken it, my pills in the morning. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. and it's such a simple thing, but it actually was massive, right? Because like, yeah. because, you know, that uncertainty of not being sure whether or not you cared for yourself the way you needed to that day. Um, can be really challenging. And so I think there's a million different things like that, right? If a walk around the block helps you feel better, then take a walk around the block every day. If laying down for five minutes or 10 minutes or a 20 minute nap as a reset when you're spiraling helps you, then take a nap when you're spiraling. One of my favorite tricks is if I have a day when I'm waking up, when I wake up, because every now and then I'll still experience day, I'll still experience days where I wake up and like I'm spiraling from the moment I wake up. Mm -hmm. I just, I just, I wake up and like my brain is just in a dark place and mm -hmm. it is bad. And I try to get my day started and it just doesn't work. Right. And what I've learned, actually it's counterproductive, but like sometimes I need a reset and sometimes that's okay. So there'll be days where I'll wake up, I'll try, I'll not sort of succeed. And then I'll be like, you know what? I'm going to take a 25 minute nap. I'm going to wake up from the 25 minute nap. And then once I wake up, I immediately have to get in the shower and brush mm -hmm. my teeth. Right. And then I have to immediately leave my apartment and take a walk. Like that's my routine. And, and it's like that reset is, can actually be a really helpful skill too. So if you find yourself spiraling out, figure out what does resetting look like for you? What is sort of taking a moment to let everything kind of wash over you, right? Get out of your system and then start afresh. Like, how do you do that for yourself? What is your ritual? And everyone's is a little bit different, but yeah. um, that's one that really works for me. A nap, a shower, and a walk, like in rapid succession. Like if I do those three things, it is very rare that I will meet a spiral that I can't get on top of eventually. Yeah, I love And that. I'm always trying to get on top of stuff. So. <laughs> Are you? What? I'm just like, I also feel like it's like, okay, yes, we're talking about wellness, but also like know that I'm sexting a lot, everybody, okay? I, I love that you, you know? put that out there. It was like the elephant in the room. Yeah. Elephant. I just want everyone to know I've been sexting more than I ever have, right? Like, I you know, like if you're everybody. interested, like, you know, I have DMs, you can slide into them, we'll figure it out. Yeah. I like feel sexier in quarantine than I felt in a long time because I'm just like a sexting maniac and I have so many like hotties that I'm, it's great. Oh, I love that. I love hearing yeah. that. Yeah. I have a whole polycule. It's fabulous. Very cool. Very cool. <laughs> so uh, thank you so much for sharing all of that. I, I resonated with a lot of what you were saying. Mm. Um, and um, just for anyone watching, um, I just want to mention the Trevor Project for anyone who um, is struggling with their mental or emotional health um, and needs someone to talk to. The Trevor Project has a 24-7 hotline um, that is just incredible um, and would highly recommend checking them out um, if you need Hell yeah. a resource. Um, we love the Trevor Project. We love, love them. them. Love them. Just for the sake of time. So we're, so we're going to wrap up. Like, I think that was so, that was so much stuff. Um, that is just so amazing to hear from. Yeah, girl, you were like, we're going to do five minutes. I was like, bitch, we're doing 35. Yeah, like five minutes turned into a little longer than that. But um, I have a treat before we wrap up. I've been learning ukulele during quarantine because I've always wanted to, because I grew up singing. Like I've been singing for my whole life. And I, but I've never known an instrument. So I've never been able to accompany myself. And I just finally was like, okay, like this is, I'm going to sit around and learn ukulele in a park. And that's going to be one of my mental health strategies. And oh my God, it is so good. Like I get to sing all this, like I get all my sad girl feelings out by singing all the sad girl feel songs I can find. And I get all my angry girl feelings out by singing all the angry girl songs I can find. Love it. Love it. Um, so this is one of my fave sad girl songs. Um, uh, it's I Fall to Pieces by Patsy Cline. Um, it's like an oldie, but a goodie. And if you don't know it, you should look it up afterwards. <laughs> I see you again. I fall to pieces. 
How can I be just your friend? You want me to act like we never kissed. You want me to forget, pretend we never met. I tried, oh I tried, but I haven't yet. You walk by and I fall to pieces. time someone speaks your name, I fall to pieces. Time only adds to the flame. You want me to find someone else to love. Someone who will love me too The way you used to do But each time that I go out with someone new You walk by and I fall to pieces You walk by and I fall to pieces You walk by and fall to pieces. Yeah, I'm finding all the chaotic pansexuals. It's good. Oh my God, you're too funny. Who are like, I want to see you in heels. And I'm like, oh, do you? Well, you have to be nice. The worst kind of dom is like a dom who's like, I bet you can't get out of bed, take a shower, make a healthy breakfast, go on a walk accomplish something today and love yourself and you're like daddy don't make me that's awful that's such punishment you know what i mean that's the worst oh a daddy who will make you take care of yourself is like that's a keeper like, like double-edged sword double-edged sword <laughs> totally